Is the lender that you're working with working against you? Are they on your team or are they playing for somebody else? What do I mean? Well, who knows? Maybe your lender is not doing it on purpose. Maybe they're a noob. Maybe they just don't understand how things work. Or maybe you can smell the commission on their breath and they don't really give a shit about you and they're just trying to close a transaction. Either way, there are a bunch of things that you need to be aware of to make sure that the people that are on your team are actually playing for you. Now, I'm a mortgage broker with over 20 years of experience helping people purchase transactions and navigate the murky waters of the real estate process. And in this video, I'm gonna share things that I see on a regular basis that I've learned over the two plus decades of doing this that'll help you have a better experience when buying a house. All right, so let's dive into the different ways that the lender that you're working with may actually be working against you. Let's start off with their interactions with the listing agent. So how can your lender work against you with the listing agent? Well, here's a bunch of different ways. It is very common for a listing agent when they receive your offer to buy the house, they actually call the lender that you're working with that could be working against you and they ask, hey, they offered five but do they qualify for 600? Because there's no freaking way that my seller is going to take 580. Can they do six? Now, a response from a noob or somebody that doesn't give a crap about you, what they're going to basically say is, you know, yes or no, based off of what you actually qualify for. But the correct answer is, Sorry, Charlie, I can't share that information with you. What you need to do is reach out to the client's agent. That's the buyer's agent. You need to reach out to that person and negotiate the deal with them. I can't go into price with you. I can't tell you what they do and don't qualify for beyond what I put on the pre-approval letter for you. Now, why is that a big deal? Well, they're fishing to see if they can counter your offer with a higher amount. That's not something that the lender should be fueling. They should shouldn't be giving them ammo to work against you. Another common thing that comes up is, do they have enough money to cover a shortage? They offered 600. Now, most likely it's only going to appraise for 575. So in the event that that happens, do they have $25,000 to cover the difference? Now, again, a noob or somebody that doesn't give a shit about you what they're going to say is basically, you know, yes or no, based off of the amount of assets that you've provided during the pre-approval process. But the correct answer, the correct response would be, no, I can't share that information with you. I'm sorry, please reach out to the buyer's agent and negotiate the deal with them. I can confirm that I will get the loan done. I do a great job. I'm a great communicator, but I'm sorry, I can't give you personal information about the buyer. Now, why do they want to know that? They're negotiating. And again, they're not on your team. They're on the seller's team. So why would you want your lender to give them ammo to counter your offer or to accept your offer with the contingency that you'll actually come up with the difference in an appraisal shortage or a gap as some of them like to call it. Now, something that I get all the time, listing agents call up, we're already in escrow, we're working on getting your transaction done for you. And part of the process, most of the time, is to get an appraisal done. Now, yeah, some loans that we do, we don't need an appraisal, but you know, the majority of them, I would say, need an appraisal. And the listing agent, they often will call us and they'll say, hey, did you get the report back? What did the value come in at? Again, a noob is gonna share the report with them or somebody that doesn't give a crap about your best interests. They're going to share that information with the listing agent. Why does that matter? Well, what happens a lot of times is that you go into escrow Part of your due diligence is to have a home inspection done, to inspect the property. And a lot of times during that process, buyers will identify things that they would like the seller to fix or to pay for to compensate them for the repairs that are needed on the property. Well, from the listing agent standpoint, let's say that you're in contract to buy a place for 600, but the appraisal came in at 620. Stuff like that happens all the time. In their mind, you're already walking in with 20 grand of equity. And so when you 
counter back and you ask for a, it's called a request for repairs. Nobody ever wants to make repairs, by the way. All they want to do is just credit you money, right? The seller never wants to fix anything usually. Most of the time, the only time that they will is if the lender requires it in order to get the job done. But if you send in your request for repairs and the listing agent knows or has a copy of the appraisal and they know that you have more equity in the deal than what the sales price is, they're going to push back on that versus making a concession. They're going to play hardball with you if they have that information. Something else that comes up a bit is can you close early? Listing agents, they'll want to, they'll reach out. Can you close early? Well, you know, maybe you can, maybe you can't. At the end of the day though, it's not up to me as the lender to share with them if you have the ability to close early. Again, I'm not negotiating the deal. The lender is not negotiating the deal. The real estate agents involved in the transaction should be coordinating that stuff with each other, not involving the lender. Because if the lender gives up that info, maybe there's something in your process of negotiation where your ability to close early will impact whether or not you get what you want. At the end of the day, the lender is working for you, not for the seller. All right, so those are some examples of how interactions between the lender and the listing agent can impact you as a home buyer. Let's talk about the real estate agent that you're working with directly, the person that basically should be on your team. Now, I'm not saying that real estate agents are bad. Not all agents are bad. A lot of agents are really great. I know a ton of really great real estate agents. However, in the course of doing business, I come across tons and tons of real estate agents that really do not have their clients' best interests in mind. Now, here's some examples of how that could potentially impact you with the agent that you might be working with. So let's say that you get a pre-approval for a down payment assistance program or for an FHA loan. Nine times out of 10, when you're working with an agent that does not care about your best interest, first thing that they're going to ask the lender is, hey, can they qualify for a conventional loan? And it's like, dude, if that's what they wanted, I would have pre-approved them for that. But that's not what they wanted. They qualify for this. They want this. We've already talked about their options. Why do agents do that? Because let's be honest here, down payment assistance is more work. You might not get your offer accepted as often if you were a conventional buyer and a lot of real estate agents are lazy and so they want to take the path of least resistance and so a down payment assistance pre-approval is not as good as a conventional in their mind and so if they push back when you qualify for other financing but you want to take advantage of down payment assistance or making a, a low down payment with FHA versus doing a conventional loan that's your prerogative and they shouldn't push you away from that just because it makes their job easier because again they work for you that's why they're earning a commission. Another thing that happens is that real estate agents, they'll get a pre-approval, they'll talk to the lender and the lender's like, hey, I talked to Mrs. Smith. She wants to keep her monthly payment at $3,500 a month. Although she qualifies for $4,500 a month or ten dollars a month, she only wants her payment to be $3,500 a month. So in order for her payment to be $3,500 a month, she cannot exceed X amount of dollars in purchase price. Well, what happens a lot of times is agents will show them houses above that price because you know at the end of the day we're consumers and we fall in love with stuff and we often go against our own best judgment and will purchase outside of our budget even though from the get-go we knew that we should not have exceeded that amount why do realtors do that sometimes well they make more money obviously the bigger the the price a lot of times but also let's say that your purchase price is below what they perceive is worth their time or what will get accepted easy there again they're all looking for an easy deal right so it may be easier if you're in a price range that's going to have more opportunities to strike so those are a couple of ways where the real estate agent that you've hired can be actually working against you but let's talk about things that the lender can do internally that don't involve the real estate agents that work against you as well now when it comes to lenders and how much money they make on various transactions it's not well known but lenders make a lot more money on government loans versus conventional loans even though conventional loans are like 90 percent of all loans that are done that being the case, FHA, this is the most common thing that I see happen is where 
FHA, or even sometimes on VA, lenders will push a customer into a product when they qualify for a superior product because they make more money off of that. So if you're somebody that's being pushed into an FHA loan and maybe you qualify for a VA loan or a conventional loan or some other type of financing that's superior for you, meaning less fees, lower rate, lower payment, you got to question why is that? And a lot of times the answer is because that's a more profitable product for the lender. Another area where your lender could be working against you is when they're being lazy. And what happens a lot of times in the home purchase process is that, you know, I was talking earlier about a request for repairs. Well, a lot of times what happens is, is that they're gonna issue you a credit. If the lender's already gone through a certain point in the process, adding a credit can kind of mess things up. We gotta redo documents, we gotta redisclose, we gotta go back through the process. It's more work, it takes more time. And unfortunately, a lot of lenders, they're lazy. And even though it'd be better for you, what they do is they basically say that the credit exceeds what you can get. And so you end up leaving money on the table, whereas the lender should have gone back and redone the fees, redone everything so that you could maximize your seller credit. And if in a circumstance where there's leftover credit, they should find things that you could spend that credit on. For instance, a lot of times what you can do is on a home warranty, if you weren't already getting one, get one. If you already had one, upgrade it. Sometimes also you can get invoices for work to be done and have it added on the settlement statement at close. You're basically paying for the work ahead of time through the seller. There's a lot of creative ways where you can maximize your seller credit but it takes more work on the lenders end, and a lot of times they just kind of play stupid and push you through the system ultimately you lose money when that happens I hope you got value out of this there's a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't even touch on but we'd be here all day if I were to talk about ways that your lender could be potentially working against you which is why it's important that you work with a professional that has your best interests in mind if you'd like to work with me and my team I would love to be that person you can get a hold of us the descriptions in the show notes below or you can always call us at 916-465-6639 and we'd be happy to help you out as always make sure to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you on the next video